For years, economic students from around the world have been expressing their dissatisfaction with their degrees. We're about to take a look at economics education at Australian universities. Rethinking Economics Australia wanted to see if an economics degree is preparing students to make those changes that they hope and dream of making. Uh, the idea with our survey was to see, given all these crises, the climate, inequality, discrimination, the health crisis, whether studying economics is preparing students to make a difference. We had a group of 54 economic students from every corner of the Australian mainland and our first question was, is studying economics preparing you to understand real world issues? We divided respondents by their progress in their course and by whether they were studying towards a course with a predominant focus on neoclassical economics or one that had a big focus on heterodox economic perspectives such as political economy or ecological environmental economics. First, the survey looked at neoclassical economics students. Did they feel studying economics is preparing them to understand any of these real world issues? The first bar shows the responses from those at the beginning to middle of their course. The second from those who are about to or have already graduated. So we see at the beginning, neoclassical economic students are quite confident that a degree would equip them with the knowledge to tackle these issues. But as they reach the end of their studies, reality struck, they realise they haven't learned to do that. With inequality, for example, students were very confident that their degrees would help them to do something about this. But at the end of the course, this belief dropped from 85 to 76%. On average, the belief that economics helps us to understand these issues dropped from 80 to 68 percent. Students who focused on heterodox economics had a different story to tell. Confidence levels soared and as they progressed through their course, their understanding of these issues only grew. On average, degrees with a heterodox orientation not only scored higher, but even increased between the start and the end of these courses that's possibly due to the reason that lecturers over there, they deal with a little bit more mainstream concepts in the beginning and then introduce more heterodox approaches that deal with those topics a little bit later. But maybe mainstream economic students just don't want to learn about any of these topics. So we ask our participants a very simple question. To what extent does your course meet your expectations? The results was no surprise. On average, heterodox courses kept their promises with no significant changes in meeting students' expectations. But neoclassical degrees took a hit, dropping by 16 percentage points. At the end of their studies, these students' expectations have only been met by 58%. Seems like these mainstream students they might have been hoping for a different kind of education. Next, we wanted to see whether the drop in how well a neoclassical oriented degree meets students' expectations was related to the drop in how well students think their degrees are preparing them for the real world economy. Some degrees are mixed to a certain extent. Students can use some of their electives to get a limited amount of exposure to heterodox elements. So asking a student how well your course was meeting your expectations on a number scale only paints a partial picture. But students were kind enough to share what was helpful and they wanted more of and what was unhelpful and they wanted less of. So diving into these commentaries, we found a chorus of complaints about unapplicable mathematics, unreasonable assumptions and a lack of learning about the history of economic thought and environmental issues. Now, if we take a look at the phrases used by neoclassical economic students and heterodox economic students on what they found helpful and satisfactory and what they wanted more of, there were more comments on the neoclassical side simply because most of the respondents studied those types of degrees. 
but the comments inside were quite similar. It would seem that some of the satisfaction resulting from mainstream courses is not due to mainstream methods, but rather due to the small amounts of heterodox elements that made its way into those courses. So regardless of whether it was a neoclassical or heterodox course, preferences were similar and that explains the difference in satisfaction. Lastly, we ask students, is mainstream economics detached from reality? So of course, the heterodox students agreed 100% across the board. In the meanwhile, neoclassical economics students, they started with a bit of skepticism at 63%. But as they came to the end of their studies, agreement rose to 71%. There seems to be a common belief among students, regardless of whether they are enrolled in neoclassical or heterodox courses, that mainstream economics is detached from reality. So why don't we see change? Dr. Tim Thornton is Director of the School of Political Economy. He's a Senior Research Fellow at the Economics in Context Initiative at Boston University and at the Development and Environment Institute at Tufts University. Uh, Tim is also on the Advisory Council of Economy Studies and I'm very pleased that he's joining me now. Dr. Thornton, welcome. Thanks, Dan. It's great to be here. So, can you give us an idea of what you make of the findings and how does it compare to some of your own observations? The findings are, are, are very uh, interesting and it's really always good to have up-to-date data, but it's quite consistent with uh, kind of long-term survey evidence that I've done and that others have done, uh, which show that um, there's, uh, you know, significant dissatisfaction uh, with, the, with the curriculum. You know, economics is quite a unique discipline. In no other discipline do students so regularly rebel or express dissatisfaction at the content of what they're taught. So do you think the curriculum changes much as a response to this type of research? Or in your expert opinion, what do you think is the best way to create change? Okay, well, I think the main problem with the curriculum is its lack of plurality. Um, you know, just one approach and also uncritically taught. To get change, uh, a plural economics probably needs a plurality of strategies. Uh, and so this particular strategy of doing the survey evidence and showing the dissatisfaction is very important. Um, uh, pushing for change inside economics departments is important. Pushing for change outside economics departments, maybe sort of if the economics department in your university is so recalcitrant that it won't get on board, maybe go talk to the politics or management or geography department and, and, and teach those subjects. In that instance, maybe call it political economy because that won't trigger the proprietorial instincts of the economists on campus. Uh, part of the reason that you can't get a broader economics curriculum is because economists don't see that curriculum as economics. And so, in a sense, that's a problem, but it's also an opportunity because you can rebadge it as political economy, which after all is the original name for economics, and simply teach it. I've, I've done this myself. Uh, problems I had great trouble teaching inside economics department, move across to the politics, uh, political science department, give them a different name and then I, I, no problem at all. Uh, so I really favour that. And then I think a third strategy is universities are large bureaucratic organisations. So it's also good to push for change outside universities. So that's why I've sort of established a school of political economy, teaching a tertiary education university level economics curriculum outside a university, sort of in solar, solar energy terms, going off the grid. So I think that thing of pushing inside uh, economics departments, elsewhere in the uni and outside university is good. And then also uh, getting employer groups and industry associations to express dissatisfaction with the nature of what graduates are being taught. I guess that's a fourth strategy. Okay, so we can use all four of these strategies to create a better economics that can help us to understand the world a bit better and hopefully create a better life for people. So I suppose these four strategies need to be coordinated in some way, almost like we can coordinate the different tools for managing inflation. Um, There's actually a new economics education network, NEEN, which has just started up, which brings together a whole bunch of organisations that are pushing for change in different ways. 
But to get a plural economics, we need a plural approach to get there. And the task for everybody is, is to say, well, what is the particular role I want to play in this larger project? Because there's, there's plenty to do and it's a goal that's really worth pursuing. In, in fact, getting a better economics is a uh, necessary but not sufficient condition for getting a better world and a safer world. Rethinking the economics curriculum at least needs to go hand in hand with economic reform in the real world. Whether it is in the monetary system or grassroots movements for a more sustainable way of living. In the video description you will find links to Economic Reform Australia and the New Economy Network Australia. And of course visit the partners page of Rethinking Economics to learn more about the School of Political Economy and the Centre for Economy Studies.